everyone. My Hello. name is Jennifer Fowler. Hold on, we're recording, so we just want to, we're good? Okay. You're good. So my name is Jennifer Fowler. I'm the director here at Cutchoke Library. And I want to welcome everyone to our first Sunday story. Um, the libraries of the town of Southfold are excited to present a series of community conversations in honor of the town's 375th anniversary. So each conversation will shine a spotlight on an individual who has taught, I'm sorry, who has made a significant impact on our community. The next conversation, if you enjoy today's, will be at Mattatuck Laurel Library on May 17th at 2 o'clock, not 3, and will feature Norman Wombach, historian and curator for the Mattatuck Laurel Historical Society. So I want to take a moment to thank our local history librarian, Mariella, who is upstairs manning the door, uh, <laughs> for orchestrating today's event. As you can see from looking around the room, she's really put her heart and soul into it and did a fantastic job pulling this all together with us. Today we're going to be speaking with Jane Minerva, past library director of the Kutchog New Suffolk Free Library. And as you know, our library is celebrating our 100th anniversary this year, so we could not think of a more perfect person to be our speaker today. <laughs> I told you it was perfect right now. <laughs> so I just want to tell you the first time I heard of Jane Minerva's name was many years ago I was taking a class full of students who were hopeful future library directors. As the legend goes, it was the middle of winter and the Kutchuk Library was sponsoring your bus trip to Manhattan. Um, while the bus was in the city, several inches of snow had fallen here in Kutchuk. Jane and her husband, John, came down to the library and cleared everyone's car off and had hot beverages waiting for the trip attendees. This story gave me my first impression of Jane, long before I would know I would be here today with her. It was, uh, the impression was of a dedicated library director who loves her library and its community. It was obvious that she would do whatever it takes to make her patrons comfortable. As the years went by, I heard many Jane stories <laughs> Some of which I hope she will be sharing today. <laughs> but now that I actually have the pleasure of knowing her, that first impression stays with me, and I really do see her as a role model for my own directorship here. I have really enjoyed getting to know Jane during this process. We've been spending a a lot of time together. She has a wicked sense of humor, as most of you know, a quick wit, and a passion for this library that is unrivaled. As she shares the stories of her 30 years tenures as a library di director, plus stories of her life, I hope that you, as I, will find a deep appreciation for her vision, her determination, and albeit occasionally unconventional, drive to establish this as the best library on the North Fork, and in my opinion, all of West Long Island. So please welcome me in joining Library Director Jane Minerva. this morning and said, what do you think? And he said, it sounds like a long obituary. That's <laughs> 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 And then he went out and pulled his bow out. <laughs> okay. Since we recorded, I will throw some stuff, but um, when you've had enough, just raise your hand and I'll skip a page. <laughs> this is large print because the macula is kind of Okay. I'm not sure why I'm here. I feel like Hillary Clinton trying to resurrect my life. Indeed, there is no need. Time is short and the water has risen. I asked that I not be recorded for the talk and was denied. It's history, <laughs> so I'll be careful in what I say and do just for the record. Early on in my personal history, I was always onward, obsessive, compulsive, positive, and all those other things. I grew up in Lindbrook, a German-Irish family. Lots of good food, noise, competition, loyalty, and parades, and God bless America. 
Music was a big part of our lives. My dad in military bands, mom playing classical piano, all singing in church and school choirs. In high school, I was in variety shows. I was Annie with the gun. <laughs> and when I didn't sing, I accompanied. I also played clarinet in the band, which allowed me to play in Patsy Rogers' recorder group. <laughs> you never know. I also played sports with a cheerleader. I, I don't know whether to throw these things out or not, but um, the final cheer for everyone was when we would, my, this one girl would do a flat split and I would come running and do a front flip over her. Well, she ended up being my sister-in-law. <laughs> drafted to Korea. We had a new babe, a gal born, and we lived with my parents, being baby we were over there, until daddy returned in two years. No phone calls, so I mean, I can't tell you what that was like. No, nothing, communications. I just, in fact, personally, what I'm doing is I, last year I, I uh, transcribed into the computer 550 letters from Korea, and we are going to put them to an R band edition for because we've got 17 grandkids at this point. Okay, so we settled in Levittown with all those other people like Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> we lived there for five years. <laughs> had another fourth baby. Oh no, that was in Montauk we had the fourth baby. <laughs> we had to move across Southern State Parkway to get our kids in the Catholic school, if you gotta believe this. So we did. And we had the fourth one. Okay, mom wanted us to go on vacation, so she booked a cottage for a month in Jamesport. Hallelujah. Near the bay. I'd never heard of these things like that. Us with our four kids, mom, dad, dogs, visitors, etc. I had never been to East End, Long Island. I learned a lot about farming, fishing, beautiful landscapes, everything, and wonderful. And when the time came, I refused to go home. <laughs> and John said, You know, I'll buy you a cottage. And I said, uh, I don't need two houses. Go home and sell it. And he wasn't happy, but. I stayed, I was age 27. I rented a bay house front for the winter, put the kids in schools, bought newly available property and fleet snipe. And if you want to go into people's, that was Fred Kalen's father that I bought that from. And then you start listing all of the Orlowski built houses. <laughs> and we bought fleet property. Okay, so. Ah, a year later, we finally moved into the partially constructed house. We had two bedrooms upstairs that were completed out of five, so I wasn't going to rent anymore. So we had, now we're living in there and using the bathroom as, you know, to wash the dishes in the bathtub and the rest <laughs> of that. And the, the builders at one point walked off. They said we could. <laughs> Life was busy but challenging, and I loved it all. Now I was in charge. Complete devotion. I never counted hours. This is uh, this is out of order. <laughs> I have to skip a few. sliding and falling because the roof leaked. So we renovated the whole building. I designed the kitchen and made new curtains and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, poor John, he did everything while commuting daily at Hicksville and his business at Rheingold. There was no Long Island Expressway at that time. He picked up over his pickup grossed over 600,000 miles. But he was also a boat and auto mechanic and that's the variety of boats we have. That's another one. Hey, guess what? Always in need of a few bucks daily, I packed his travel vehicle with loads of stuff from the local farm stands. <laughs> and he went to work, plus my jellies, pickles, etc. We had a new business. The guys who worked with the Nassau loved the tomatoes, the corn, the beans, the peaches, and we just doubled the price. 
That's all packaged. And imagine what we could have done with wine. Actually, I worked for Louisa Hargrave in my spare time, picking their first crop and cut job, all part of our team. She was one of our trustees. And actually, when she was having her first baby, they delivered it in the back seat. It was, you know, you've got to live out here. It's just like the one credit to the thing. But our business did well, and we put the coins in the big jar and bought our first color TV. And then he absolutely refused to continue and said he couldn't take any more fruit flies <laughs> on his trip to Nassau Dale. Well, okay, we found other things to keep us busy. We volunteered everywhere. I got a custodial job at the Park District. You've got to hear this one. My son was now a senior in uh, Hersey High, and he needed money. I mean, we were paying tuition everywhere, so he went to the local beach, and he was hired uh, to do custodial work and clean the garbage and stuff like that. And then he was also applied at Plum Island, and he was hired there. So he said, Mom, can you just do this? So I had to clean the toilets every day, like, for four months. <laughs> <laughs> and the, <laughs> and he, what he had this big job over there, aside from going over by ferry and back, he had to pick up the mice and put the boys here in the room. <laughs> <laughs> great job. <laughs> Father Henry got me because his family lived right across the street from me, and he knew I could play piano. I was like, you know, I could also drink wine. Asked if I would try the organ. Of course, I could do that too. I had had lessons in Lindbergh when I was 12. So I bought a Hammond organ on Swap and Shop from Jim Holman, Bruins. you got to believe all this, and reduced my abilities. And I took over the 1030 Mass on Sundays plus holidays, rehearsals, a few weddings. No pay for 10 years. I also worked with the choir and the teen guitar group and loved working and performing in Mattapa for the North Fork Community Theater. There you go again. Mm -hmm. And South Hall with the North Fork Corral. I love public meetings. School, fire department, park district, town, property owners, homemakers. I got to know everybody. And it was just so rewarding to be with people and sit down and talk and chat. And you didn't have to watch TV. With our last child almost ready for school, I volunteered at the Sacred Heart School Library. And then I figured out this place was across the street. What's the difference? So I'll take it from there. I was too hired and took over as director about two years later for a 15 hour a week with my kids in schools. I was paid 1,242 cents an hour. And we had 15 hour week, three, 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 and three on Saturday morning. Okay, well, so. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did John shuffle the papers? <laughs> okay, I think I could just get some. Uh, life was busy and challenging, and I loved it. I was in charge of everything. Complete devotion. I never counted hours, just wanted excellence. This is in the library. I learned from my experiences. I gave up most of my other volunteers to death positions and still organize some of my friends' weddings <laughs> and play for special holidays. And um, I'm allowed to throw out funny stories, but I had the first time there was a an Easter midnight mass and I had had all the family for whatever. So I went and it was so hot. It was like the first, you know, the beginning of April. And when you went into Our Lady of Good Council Church, you the the priests and all the boys were getting dressed, and then I walked across and I went to the little tiny room that was up the staircase. It was so hot up there, I couldn't believe it. Okay, I started up the organ and everything, and then I look, I noticed on the other side, it was cool. That, you know, their little robes were blowing and everything, and so I looked over and there were these casement windows, and I went like, oh my god, I mean, that probably had never been opened in a hundred years. But I went for the operatory and then I slid over very quietly. It was wonderful. It was absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. And when I turned around and looked at Father Henry, all the hosts on the altar were quite a <laughs> 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 It kind of gave me that. <laughs> but I think you'd probably have the people that they were. <laughs> that kind of ending.
attended it. I had a key to that church and this church. And so when I left, I let out all the stops and I played Take Me Out to Ball Game and rock the church. <laughs> okay. Fifteen hours a week was the library, the beginning of my long run, which ended in 40 years. And it soon became 30 from 15, and the staff increased to a dozen, but very slowly over the years. I never put an ad in the newspaper. I just hired people that I knew in the community, and basically that kicked tax money back into their pockets, which I thought was great. Um, I never advertised, just stuck a sign on the door. Half <laughs> <laughs> came in and she was getting some paperwork for the school and the stuff. And they said, hey, come, I think you would like this, you know? <laughs> and so that's the way we got everybody, you know? You knew who they were and you were in committees. In the meantime, my mom and dad, or very to take it hard, moved in with us. She was Parkinson's. He just retired from the Bell Laboratories and I give my gifts and life from him. He was a gifted guy. He taught me, he got kicked out of uh, Catholic school in high school because he was a military person in the National Guard and he played trumpet and he marched with bands and he got paid and then he marched with the first band and run to the back and then went to the back. <laughs> <laughs> so one day on a Thursday night they went and they had a dinner in a restaurant and he was eating the steak. And you know, the next day, Friday, in um, the Catholic school they called him and they said, you ate meat on Friday. Oh. Over midnight. So he started working. <laughs> it was his fun. So he started working the bed labs. And he went from, smart guy, went from one job to another job to another job. And the last one he had, and then he said he was, he said he was in charge of shipping and receiving. And I said, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry. You know, you had to. Then I read his stuff after he passed away. You know, the last thing he shipped was the Hubble telescope from the east to the west coast. <laughs> and I thought he was pacing stamps. <laughs> okay, so I still continued to do other things, like he taught me how to save coins, stamps. He bought me a camera when I was a little kid and taught me how to develop the film, print the pictures, and then ferrotype. You know, it's just, oh God. It wasn't anything like, could you give me something, you know? And he had this desk downstairs with all his coins in, which I have now. And then the guy from the candy store around the corner came and knocked on the door and he said, your little girl is spending a lot of pennies. With Indian heads. And I thought you ordered them. <laughs> I knew where they were. I just was taking a few of them. <laughs> so he didn't teach me how to do that. Okay, so then when I'm here, getting sewing, rock making, and running the library, um, I was also writing the Catch Up column in the Manitoba Traveler until that closed. Uh, running the Sacred Heart Church annual three-day weekend auction, and and he'd bring a Rangel truck, and he would lose more money than I made on the, on the auction. You know, so. <laughs> and then I had a daughter who was going to go away to college, and she had wanted. We had a, an old, I don't know, car. Anyhow, we put it in the auction, and she bought it for three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> told her she couldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was chairman of the Cutthroat Hamlet Committee for the town, and then appointed by Scott Russell, a former friend of mine, with my kids, and eventually we knew everybody in town. We all went to school together, and eventually uh, library board president here. Uh, having many Cutthroat Hamlet meetings to ascertain zoning changes and regulations. I terminated when I finally ended up in the local hospital with a stress collapse. Then I was totally dedicated to the library. At age 40, a 10-year program began for me to get a master's in library science from uh, CW Post. I was so embarrassed to be at the bottom of the professional scale never having been to college. I got my associate degree at Suffolk, my literature degree at St. Joe is where I went with all the nuns to Europe and got them all drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was not funny. Uh, they were not the because we were coming back from our, not our, we were coming back from Scotland and we went to the duty free shop and they all got to get to do and pizza and everything. And I bought uh, half a case of 
duty-free scotch. <laughs> <laughs> plane. Well, then the plane had a problem with the computers, and we had to go down in Ireland, but they didn't allow us to get off, so I started passing. <laughs> <laughs> then the guys came with the officials and came up the ramp, and they said, who is Jane Murphy? <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, think about that toilet in the old church closet. Okay, <laughs> up here. When we went into this building, there was no exit door. Just the front door. I mean, talk about being safe. No. <laughs> and then in the back, this was the, the priestly area with this back, that thing there. No door, no exit. But out in the front, where the double doors came in, there was a big wood closet, and they put a bathroom in there. But then uh, it would freeze like for four months. And so you had to go home or go to the diner. <laughs> and then I realized afterward, when we did the extension and the improvement, I spoke to the guys that were building, and I said, and how did you close up you know, the cesspool or whatever you did? And they said, it was just a hole in the floor. It was <laughs> belong to a community, but there is no community without the old teams. Okay? They did it. And you got to keep on that level. Recently, I have been rereading our local books, and Heaven and Earth is startling. Okay? It gives the history of the first immigrants coming over from Britain, and this was a British colony. And the first thing they did was bought the church property in Kachok. That was the first piece of land that went because we had a lot that belonged to the Native Americans and you hear all of this stuff. And then uh, and that the churches actually were the political places in the community. Yes, they had a town in South Hall, the town hall or something like that. But this is why we have this differentiation in uh, the why teach and go to a church and then we'll build another church and yeah but so anyhow what happened to how this church got built was that in 1861, <coughs> okay, um, the abolitionists and the minister of the Presbyterian Church uh, were locked out. And so, can, can you believe this? Who was the street? So they bought the property, <laughs> they built a whole new building with a steeple and all the rest of it, and they were here until around 1913 when they were welcomed back to be president. <laughs> All is forgiven. Okay, so then this became a hobble for whatever, you know, the Methodist Church had a big fire and they were in here and so forth. And then uh, this, this minister uh, actually started collecting and sharing books and so forth. <coughs> so that group of people, and they're all listed on those papers over there, take them home, their aunts and uncles. And um, that's what that, that was how it happened, you know. And then eventually, we had to purchase the building, and Mr. Bill Wiggum wouldn't allow it. He was a Congregationalist leader. Um, he, uh, Wendy wrote that we paid a dollar a year, but I never paid a dollar a year. We were freeloaders. <laughs> <laughs> We tried and tried and tried, and he would not allow us to purchase the building. So we went and we bought another building, I can't remember what it was, over next to Dix Larks, the big Greek, Greek brick, um, telephone building or court, whatever, <coughs> yes. And then when Bill heard that we bought it, he went like, oh, I'm so sorry, you really should have a church. So we went like, yeah, now we got to go back to the realtor and sell the property and all the fun stuff. And then we had a raffle and in order to raise money, so we had to go out in the middle of the street to pull it because we couldn't do unfair things inside of a Christian church, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, we bought it for 75000 and then we started over the years to improve and to do whatever we could do. What year did you buy it? What year did you buy it? Good question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Eighties, early eighties, yeah, early eighties, early eighties, yeah, early eighties. Yeah. yeah, it was just slip and slide all the way. It didn't mm -hmm. make too much difference what we were doing. Churches were meeting rooms for us. They made political decisions. Um, when they came out, it was all British, and that's understandable. And they then the Irish started coming, and they built their two churches, and the Polish, and 
because they came to Kotchog, this was the most fertile land and had the best fish <laughs> in America. And they, they didn't have anything left over there in Britain, so I couldn't believe they were going, you know, back and forth and so forth. So I'm glad this local architecture is now being saved. I mean, look what was done here and whatever, if it's going to be an arts theater or in the Methodist church eventually or whatever. Okay, so I read this presentation and I told you he had said it was an obituary. <laughs> well, that could be true because my 80th birthday was on Easter and I chose not. Because when I looked at my calendar, Passover began in darkness the night before, so I passed it over. This is, I don't know if we can do this now or not, but as per Kate Smith, uh, this is only the beginning of another seventh inning stretch. God bless the Yankee Stadium. God bless America, especially the continuing teams in Kutchog and No Suffolk. Is that true? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> 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 Six years, I learned a tremendous amount from this woman. She set the standard in the library for the quality of the books that were on the shelves, and I don't mean just what was in the books, I mean the shape of the books. I would go from here to other libraries and look at picture book collections, and they looked like ratty. And Jane was insistent that we keep the books in good condition. And one other story I want to tell you is. In, in the old church building, if you, you know those windows are two stories high, and when I started here, everything was in that room, as, as it was with many other people here on staff. But anyway, those windows that were two stories high had curtains, and they had blinds on them. And who do you think took them home and washed them in her bathroom? Jane! <laughs> I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you, Jane, for telling me to go back to school. And I went and got my undergraduates and my master's because Jane pushed me. So that was the most wonderful thing that happened in my life. So thank you. <laughs> what? Anyone? It was very enjoyable. I enjoyed your talk very, very much. Truly. Yes, it's the truth. Well, there's a lot more than I said. <laughs> <laughs> this is another Jane Renover story but, that I remember, but I don't know if she remembers it. Um, I just moved down here and it was 9 11 that year, and she wow. was telling us about um, what happened. And she said, Some man came in and he said, I have to speak to Jane. Um, he said, I was in 9 11 and <coughs> my office was destroyed with a library book. <laughs> and those people started crying. And then she said, he gave her a donation. She wouldn't take it. <laughs> we had uh, seven deaths with uh, people on NASA. 
their sons and lawyers, kids and whatever. It was horrible. And these things continue. Uh, next question. Question. Who wants to sing? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a current trustee, and I was just interviewing somebody to be a new trustee, and he said he heard a great story about you that one way of fundraising was that you used to autograph books in the book sale as if it were from the author. <laughs>
is that still up there? I said, yeah. He said, well, watch it. He said, because they're stealing them with helicopters. <laughs> that was our new lobby and good old Jackie Penny's painting. My gosh, what she did for this. There she is with her lobby. And they couldn't get in the car. They had to walk it over. <laughs> and here she is painting. Look at the size of it. Wow. And she made everything in town on that little... Thing. And then she was a very good supporter of the library still is at home. Bill what? Peters, yeah. uh, this was the opening of the extension. And oh my God, I couldn't believe this, but today I went, this is my oldest granddaughter, mm -hmm. of all of them. And this was put in, and it was supposed to be with John Wickham, but that's not John Wickham. Yeah, the upper one, See, the the upper upper the left. Up yeah, he's on the left-hand okay. person. Well, the new staircase goes across it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. There's Jackie. Yeah. Bill. Bill. Carry on. Okay, go back. I'll there. go back. Oh, this one. Okay, that's uh, Winifred Billard, second from the left. Oh yeah. And Isabel Ross. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Second yeah. from yeah. the right. And Bill. And oh my gosh, this was controversial, but. We had a guy named Case Stewart on the board, and he had a sheep cutting on the front lawn. <laughs> well, she 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 shearing. Shearing. Yeah, shearing. Shearing. Sheep shearing. Sheep shearing. <laughs> Some people were very upset by that. Oh, 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 no, it was She lived around the corner. Yeah, um, I saw it. Oh, that's me shoveling the snow. It's <laughs> <laughs> snowing in spring. We all shoveled snow. <laughs> a full oh, service oh, library. Okay. Oh, there's there it is. They put these people taking it down. Or, no, it's all really up, I guess. Yeah, there's bullet holes in that. Too. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. really? Yeah. And that was the staircase that we, when we renovated, we put up, and the next renovator took it down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we put that many people on it, and it didn't fall down. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, Louisa Hargrave. And um, Joanne and uh, Joanne Slotkins. 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 Okay, and Coster, Helen, and yep. Bill. Yeah. And uh, June. Yeah. Bill and Jean. And Tony DeMeo. Yeah. Tony DeMeo. Yeah. I don't even know what this was. Okay. So that was the trustees dinner. Uh, I have one more thing to read. That would be. Um, keep going. This. <laughs> oh, friends of the library now. Oh, oh yeah, who ran those bus trips all the time? That's not Fitzgerald. She ran the bus trips. That's my son-in-law putting up on the meter. Should I do it again? Oh yeah. Okay, that's me waving my misty finger at someone. <laughs> that was your twenty-fifth anniversary. I still have that dress. It's Gerald. Liz Burns, Helen, um, Mariella, me, Dorothy Fitzgerald, me, and Jim Fitzgerald. He. He's something else. <laughs> He's another shaman on the town guy. Mm -hmm. But um Mikey's oh, okay. Mikey's Mikey, yeah. and that's what I'm looking for. He there was a beautiful poem oh, he wrote right. for me. That's nice. Anybody that? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's a sad screen, did you? Yep, my lover. <laughs> that was Mikey. That's Bob Baker, yep. second yep. from the left. Mm -hmm. And that's the Esty died two yeah. three yeah. weeks ago. Graham's wife. And that's my son in law and my hubby. And oh God. There's two more. That's what I told you. Everybody, half of everybody in this is passed. Okay. Over. But they all really made life good. Oh, they Heavens. Everybody was just wonderful. Yep. There's an opportunity to do good things. Yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These pictures yeah. were all taken by Grams. Yeah. 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 That was then, and this is now. His birthday is today. He's, he's 82 today. Okay, and this is. Um, oh, give me the name. Claire, Claire and Bob Lewis. Lewis and Hayden Allen. Yeah. 
he still with us? Are they still alive? Yep. He is. is I it? believe. Or she passed away? Yes. About 10 years ago. Oh, look at Peter. Oh, my gosh. He still looks that way. <laughs> he puts it in a ponytail now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there's... Hey, June, you never change. You're wearing pink today. That's you, isn't it? Um, oh, my God, that is me. That's a dad. <laughs> Bottom left is a dad. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I still know that stuff. Jody Adams. And she and uh, Paul would take the remains of the old book sales and put them in their car and drive them to the riverbed and give them to them. That's um, Parkin. No. Yeah, um, Parker. Betsy McDonald. Yeah. Parker Dickerson. Parker Dickerson. Yeah. Betsy and McDonald Betsy. and John were in high school together in <coughs> and when she moved out and she hooked on to Parker and he was just great. He's fast. She's hanging with um Okay. Uh, May McGurk, just passed out two to three months ago. Yeah. 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 Hey, Jim, there you are with your mom. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And his sister. Yeah. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, be the again. Hey, there you are. Oh, that's us. That's us. That's Grumet. Grumet. Oh, Grumet. Oh, Grumet. Grumet. Sorry. I studied French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, these people were uh, trustees here. Jay and Joanne. This is for a trustees yep. reunion. It was pretty special. It's a lovely, a lovely nice. Stan. Oh, he was a. Oh, Josh Wharton. Bob Lee's Oh, Josh Wharton. Thank you. Josh <laughs> I hope all these pictures are marked in the collection. 